if you've seen the 300-year-old human mummy that came out of Alaska, you already know that what's buried under the Antarctic soil is going to be a lot more frightening. What else can you expect from a land where temperatures are even lower than those on Mars? It truly is an alien continent. But it wasn't always like this. It was a place full of life, with dense forests and terrifying creatures, massive theropod dinosaurs, prehistoric crocodiles, and the most fearsome reptilian of all, the Mosasaurus. All roamed Antarctica because long ago, this continent was not the icy desert it is today. But there's one thing about it that never changed. Just as humans can't survive in its environment today, they couldn't even dream of setting foot in prehistoric Antarctica. And in this video, you'll find all the reasons why. Here's the first one. In 1990, a crazy discovery was made in the remote, rocky expanse of the Transantarctic Mountains the remains of a massive, meat-eating dinosaur. It took over two decades and numerous expeditions to carefully extract the enormous predator's bones from the frozen crags of Mount Kirkpatrick. This dinosaur, named Crylophosaurus, meaning frozen crested lizard, was aptly named for its distinctive head crest and its ability to endure the freezing, three-month-long darkness of prehistoric Antarctica. It is also affectionately known as the Elvisaurus, named after singer Elvis Presley. Scientists can only speculate about the headcrest's purpose, but as with the human Elvis, it was probably a sexually selected characteristic, meant to attract the female of the species. This 25-foot or 7.6-meter South Pole hunter turned out to be the largest known early Jurassic carnivore on Earth. A true nightmare from the frozen past. And it wasn't alone. Antarctopelta, meaning Antarctic shield, was a herbivorous dinosaur from the Cretaceous period that also inhabited Antarctica. This ankylosaurian dinosaur measured about 13 feet or 4 meters in length, making it relatively small compared to other ankylosaurs. But despite its small size, it was pretty tricky trying to classify this guy as it displayed traits from two different families of ankylosaurs. Unearthed on James Ross Island in 1986, it became the first dinosaur ever found in Antarctica and the second to be formally named from the continent. This discovery not only shed light on Antarctica's ancient inhabitants, but also posed new questions about how dinosaurs adapted to survive in such extreme polar conditions. Like its armored relatives, Antarctopelta was a robust herbivorous quadruped, protected by thick plates embedded in its skin. Although only fragments of its skull have been found, they reveal a skull heavily reinforced for defense complete with a striking suborbital spike over the eye. Its leaf-shaped teeth, with serrations concentrated near the snout tip, suggest a diet adapted for chewing tough vegetation. In addition to this formidable dinosaur, another chilling discovery has emerged from the icy depths of Antarctica, a colossal soft-shell egg of ancient origins. Unearthed around a decade ago and recently identified by researchers at the University of Texas in Austin, this fossilized marvel sat neglected in Chile's National Museum of Natural History until now. This egg, resembling a squashed football at over 11 inches long and 7 inches wide, is believed to be the largest of its kind ever found. Dating back around 66 million years, just before the dinosaurs met their end, it offers a glimpse into the mysterious world of an extinct marine reptile, a mosasaur. These monstrous predators, reminiscent of the aquatic giants from Jurassic World, likely laid such eggs. By comparing the egg size with those of modern reptiles, scientists estimated the mosasaur that laid it must have been over 23 feet long, excluding its tail. Fossilized bones of juvenile and adult mosasaurs and plesiosaurs found in the same Antarctic rock formation further reinforced the shocking find. Large mosasaurs often occupied the top of the food chain in the Cretaceous Oceans, dominating their ecosystem with their formidable presence. Antarctica, with its rich prehistoric tapestry, hosted these fearsome mosasaurs, alongside one of its terrifying kinds, the Kaikaifilu, and mysterious giant eggs. If this doesn't reinforce the icy continent's reputation as a land of ancient nightmares, let us introduce you to the Elasmosaurus. It took decades of battling harsh weather on a small, desolate island off the Antarctic Peninsula, 
but scientists have finally unearthed the heaviest known elasmosaur. This ancient aquatic reptile, which swam the seas during the Cretaceous period alongside the dinosaurs, would have weighed as much as 15 tons. Now, it stands as one of the most complete ancient reptile fossils ever discovered in Antarctica. Elasmosaurs belong to the family of plesiosaurs, some of the largest sea creatures of the Cretaceous. Plesiosaurs generally resembled large manatees with giraffe-like necks and snake-like heads, but they had four flippers instead of three. The newly described heavyweight elasmosaur belongs to the genus Aristonectes, a group that stands out from other elasmosaurs due to its distinct features. Unlike their North American counterparts, Aristonectes species had shorter necks and larger skulls. This as yet unnamed elasmosaur weighed around 14.8 tons, or 32,628 kilograms, with a head-to-tail length of nearly 40 feet, or 12 meters. While some previously known Aristonecti specimens have weighed around 11 tons, or 11,000 kilograms, most other elasmosaurs typically weighed about 5 tons. For such a massive creature to thrive, there must have been an abundance of marine life to satisfy its appetite. The existence of these gigantic elasmosaurs so late in the Cretaceous period suggests that the aquatic world was thriving right up until the sudden mass extinction. Here's a question for you. Having a warmer climate is one thing, but can you imagine Antarctica as a landscape of steaming swamp and stinky forest? It became unbearably hot in summer, and even at its coldest, it hardly ever froze. This was the Arctic Circle 90 million years ago. And of course, in a place like that, you're going to find ancient relatives of crocodiles. Scientists believe a recent fossil finding proves early relatives of dinosaurs and crocodiles once roamed the lush forests of what is now ice-covered Antarctica. A new species of dinosaur, Antarctonax shackletoni, has been discovered. The name means Antarctic King, and rightfully so. The incomplete fossil skeleton is described as an iguana-sized reptile that hunted bugs and early relatives of mammals and amphibians around 250 million years ago, when Antarctica was covered with forests and rivers. On its own, it just looks a little like a lizard, but evolutionarily, it's one of the first members of the big group of crocodiles and dinosaurs. So, it tells us a lot about how dinosaurs and their closest relatives evolved and spread. The researchers who made this discovery believe that during this time, Antarctica rarely dipped below freezing and was home to diverse wildlife. About two million years before the Antarctic King lived, Earth's largest mass extinction occurred, caused by volcanic eruptions that killed 90% of all animal life. The years immediately after the extinction event were an evolutionary free-for-all. Mass extinction wiped the slate clean and allowed new groups of animals, including archosaurs like dinosaurs, to thrive. Antarctodon is another extinct mammal from the early Eocene that existed in old Antarctica. It was about the size of a large dog and belonged to a group called the Strapotherians. These were distinct relatives of today's elephants and manatees. The tale of Antarctodon began with a single tooth, a remarkable fossil found in Seymour Island in West Antarctica. This tooth, discovered by scientists in 2011, became the key to unlocking the mystery of Antarctodon sabrali. Back then, Seymour Island was part of a land bridge connecting Antarctica with South America, where similar creatures once roamed. What makes this tooth so special is that despite being just a solitary find, its shape and size give clues about what Antarctodon looked like and how it lived. It most likely used its teeth to chew on plants, much like today's herbivores, munching on grasses and leaves. But this discovery wasn't just about a fossil tooth. It was a glimpse into Antarctica's ancient past. It once again confirms that millions of years ago, this icy continent was a much warmer place. And up next on our list is the Australodelphus. This was a strange dolphin that lived during the Pliocene epoch millions of years ago. The name literally translates to Southern Dolphin, which was a testament to Antarctica's vibrant past. Discovered in the Sawsdale Formation on the Mule Peninsula of East Antarctica, this creature's fossils revealed a story of adaptation and survival in a world very different from today. The discovery of Australodelphus was a breakthrough in paleontology, shedding light on the unique adaptations of marine life in Antarctica. Its facial structure suggested a feeding strategy similar to modern beaked whales, using rapid mouth openings to create suction for capturing soft-bodied prey. Named Mirus, 
Latin for strange or wonderful, Australodelphus mirrored the mysteries of its environment. Its fossils, collected over years of exploration, unveiled clues about a time when Antarctica was connected to other continents and shared faunal connections across the Southern Hemisphere. Now for the colossal penguin. Unearthed from the frozen Earth, the fossilized bones of Pleiodiptes Klakowski tell a tale of a true titan of the penguin world, towering over today's largest emperor penguins. This mighty bird, measuring a staggering 6.5 feet or 2 meters from beak to toe and weighing in at a hefty 115 kilograms or 253 pounds, roamed the shores some 37 to 40 million years ago. Back then, Antarctica teemed with penguin life hosting a diverse community of 10 to 14 different species along its frosty coastlines. The discovery of P. Klikowski's massive bones, including an astonishingly long tarsometatarsus, a fusion of ankle and foot bones measuring a record 9.1 centimeters, tells us about its incredible size. While estimates suggest it stood taller than any known penguin, its actual height might have been slightly less than its length due to its upright stance. Compared to today's emperor penguins, which reach lengths of 4.4 feet or 1.36 meters and weigh about 46 kilograms or 101 pounds, P. Klakowski was a true giant. Even compared to its ancient cousins, it surpassed the previous height record held by another extinct species at around 1.5 meters tall. Its skeleton was notably different from modern penguins, making length estimates uncertain, but confirming its enormous size. Such giants likely had adapted skeletons that enabled them to dive deeper and stay submerged longer than small penguins, up to 40 minutes at a time, giving them an advantage in hunting fish in the frigid Antarctic waters. Also present in those waters was another penguin species, known as Paleodiptes antarcticus, also known as the narrow flippered penguin. It was a notably large species of penguin, with some variation in size among individuals. While exact measurements are challenging to pin down, these birds likely stood around 1.4 meters or 4.7 feet tall during their lifetime, making them slightly larger than today's emperor penguins. Among the largest known penguin species, Paleodiptes antarcticus was the final species of its genus. It's believed to have evolved from or possibly coexisted with Paleodiptes marplesi, another large penguin species. Over time, there may have been a slight decrease in size within the lineage. In this ancient past, another group of now extinct creatures lived. These were small marsupials called microbiotheries. These belonged to a special order known as microbiotheria, which includes the Monito del Monte, a tiny marsupial still found in the rainforests of South America. But these ancient microbiotheries weren't just limited to South America. Fossils tell us they also wandered into other parts of the world millions of years ago. It was a time when South America, Antarctica, and Australia were all part of one big landmass called Gondwana. Back then, these little marsupials started their journey. The story begins in Bolivia, where the oldest microbiotheory fossils have been found. These date back to a time called the Early Paleocene, which means they lived over 60 million years ago. From their teeth, scientists have learned about Casia cordillerensis, one of the earliest microbiotheories known to us. As time passed, more of these creatures were discovered across South America. They roamed the forests and grasslands, leaving behind their fossilized remains for us to uncover today. In places like Seymour Island in Western Antarctica, fossil teeth suggest that microbiotheories also ventured into these colder lands during a warmer period in Earth's history. Even in northeastern Australia, clues have been found in the Tingamara local fauna. Here, fossils hint at the presence of early microbiotheories showing us how these marsupials spread across Gondwana. They adapted to different environments, from the lush forests of South America to the icy shores of Antarctica and eventually to the diverse landscapes of Australia. Now let's talk about the extremely shady history of the White Continent to understand what exactly has been going on there. In the distant past, around 600 million years ago, a colossal supercontinent known as Gondwana stretched across the Earth's surface. This ancient landmass included what we now call Antarctica, nestled among other familiar continents like South America, Africa, and Australia. Back then, life on Earth was a far cry from what we know today. It was a time when tiny, microscopic organisms dominated the seas, and the land was barren, devoid of visible plant or animal life. As time marched forward into the Adiacaran and Cryogenian periods, 
subtle changes began to stir under the surface of the ocean. Early marine creatures such as sponges tentatively began to appear, marking the beginnings of a gradual shift towards more complex life forms. These creatures paved the way for a new era, the Cambrian Explosion, around 541 million years ago. During this remarkable period, Antarctica, then a part of Gondwana, enjoyed a relatively mild climate with expansive coastlines kissed by warm seas. It was a time when life flourished in the oceans, giving rise to diverse marine species. The story of Antarctica's ancient past takes a dramatic turn as we journey through the Devonian, Carboniferous and Permian periods. Fossil evidence unearthed from beneath the icy surface tells us that Antarctica was once teeming with life. Among the ancient swamps and lush fern forests, creatures like the Lystrosaurus also roamed. This herbivorous giant thrived in a world where towering trees and thick vegetation stretched as far as the eye could see. But the Great Dying, a catastrophic event marking the end of the Permian period, changed everything. This mass extinction event devastated life across the globe. Yet, Antarctica seemed to provide a sanctuary for the resilient Lystosaurus and other creatures. While much of Gondwana turned into a harsh, arid wasteland, Antarctica remained relatively temperate, sheltering a unique group of species. Fast forward to the Jurassic period, and Antarctica reveals more of its ancient secrets. Fossil sites like Mount Kirkpatrick take the covers off of a world unimaginable today. A world where dense forests of cycads and towering conifers stretched across the land. These primeval forests supported a thriving ecosystem of dinosaurs, synapsids, and flying pterosaurs. Among them, the Crylophosaurus, a fearsome predator resembling a smaller cousin of the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex, prowled the ancient Antarctic landscape. It was a time of giants and dramatic landscapes, where Antarctica stood as a hub of biodiversity. As the continents continued their slow dance across the Earth's surface, Antarctica witnessed the rise and fall of mighty creatures. Dinosaurs, including the majestic Glacialosaurus, roamed the icy plains and adapted to life in a land that knew no winter as we do today. The discovery of small pterosaurs like Dimorphodon hints at a sky filled with ancient winged creatures, adding to the diversity of life that once thrived in this now frozen wilderness. Throughout the Cretaceous period, as Gondwana gradually fragmented and Antarctica drifted southward, the continent's climate began to shift. Evidence suggests that inland regions cooled, possibly experiencing bouts of glaciation as the continent settled into its polar position. Despite these changes, Antarctica's ancient legacy as a cradle of life persisted, leaving behind a treasure trove of fossils and clues to its vibrant past. Today, Antarctica stands as a frozen frontier its icy landscapes holding secrets of a time when giants roamed and ecosystems thrived. The fossils buried beneath its snow and ice continue to unravel the mysteries of Earth's history, reminding us of a time when this southernmost continent was anything but frozen, a time when prehistoric Antarctica was, in its own way, a place of insane diversity and pure evolutionary drama. After hearing about the dangers the continents once posed, would you still want to explore it someday? Let us know in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.